That's the first half of the discussion I had with Ben Davidson, a.k.a. Suspicious Observers. This came out of his claims that I'd lied and deliberately misrepresented one of his videos and his call for a live debate on my alleged misdeeds. Two days before we were due to talk, Ben told me it wasn't going out live after all, and I had no time to get that organised from my side. So I asked Ben to send me the audio file, which he very kindly did, and I've been matching it to the images I was showing him during our discussion. Since the discussion, I've also fact-checked some of his claims that I couldn't check in the middle of the discussion, and also added a couple of graphics to illustrate what we're talking about. I make it very clear when these are added and pause the audio when I add them, without cutting the audio at all. The only things I've cut out, with Ben's permission, are where we had technical issues of no sound or no images. So if Ben wants to post this on his channel without the fact checks, he can do so seamlessly by simply cutting them out. Anyway, here goes. Um, well, listen. You go. You go first, because uh, you you were the one who, who thought my my video was um, uh, misrepresenting you. So I'm happy to, to to listen to that. All right. So um, I'd I'd rather not uh, hurl accusations at you. What I'd rather do is sort of go through <laughs> some of the things right now, and uh, you tell me where I'm going wrong. Okay? Because okay, sure. Um, uh, and I'll start with the fact that where, where you had crossed off Ice Age and put Interglacial, uh, I kind of figured that all the stuff above that was what happened during the Interglacial. We're in the Interglacial. And so the way I saw it is, you know, we're in the Ice Age for a long time. There's glaciers forming at the poles, obviously, that there's ice up there. And then there's ice also at lower latitudes, maybe not at what we would consider low latitude, but at least at mid latitudes, latitudes that are lower. As I understood it, uh... Earth was in an ice age and had been in many ice ages where, unlike today where we see ice uh, semi-permanently at the polar regions or at some places of the poles permanently right now, uh, there were glaciers at lower latitudes as well. Um, for example, yeah. uh, you know, in the Great Lakes region um, and probably parts of Scandinavia and things like that. And so what happens is it doesn't all just start to melt right away. What happens is the glaciers at mid-latitude start to melt, but while that is happening, at the polar region, there is much more accumulation of ice. There's a lot more, like it's not like the whole planet starts melting all at once. So we're in an ice age and that's how it is. And that one, two, three, four, five was supposed to be the story of the interglacial. And five was supposed to be a question mark as to how that was actually going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. So, as I saw it, as opposed to ice accumulating everywhere, the first thing we notice in an, in an interglacial is that the ice is accumulating only at the poles, as opposed to everywhere. Right. And okay. that, And that is what drops Earth's albedo. The fact that we went from having ice everywhere to ice being in a, accumulating at the poles. Now, because this is just apparently the first video in this series that you've commented on, it is a bit like coming into Wednesday in week nine in a, sem you know, in a, in a seminar class. And so we've been talking about the different phases of ice. There's ice accumulating everywhere. There's ice accumulating at the poles. And then there's ice melting everywhere. Those are basically the only three okay. phases Earth has. And so as we come out of a, a glacial period and we go into the interglacial, the story of that is we go from having ice everywhere to ice accumulating at the poles only. When this happens, Earth's albedo drops. The planet warms up even further. Eventually, that warmth overtakes the poles too. CO2 is released, even more methane is released, while it's heating up, more water vapors going into the atmosphere, and yet, the question mark number five, always an ice age has followed. And that, that seems to, we didn't attempt to give an answer to that, we just sort of said, like, that, that is what has happened. And I, I, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, there was still CO2 and methane releases and water vapor, you know, increases in the atmosphere, during the previous interglacials, right? And some something always throws us back into an ice okay. age. Okay, right. Can I, can I stop you there? Because I've been taking notes, and there's a lot to get through on that. 
Uh, the first thing is, I did get the impression from a lot of your subscribers that they saw some sort of hidden uh, references behind all this that clearly, now that you tell me this is part of a series of things you've been doing, um, that makes a lot more sense. Because taken on its own, this video um, su did suggest that um, uh, ice accumulate. Well, okay, I won't go into that. I'll, I'll show you the timeline a bit later. But, well, but no, I, I think what you're not getting... Okay. Oh, sorry, let me just say the... Uh, let, let me ask you what you think, okay, you, what you don't get is why we go from an interglacial, you can understand why we go from a glaciation into an interglacial, but what I noticed was you said somehow we go from an interglacial back into a glaciation, that's going from, from a warm interglacial like we have now back into what you call an ice age. Now, you said somehow, which suggests that you don't think that there is any scientific explanation for that. So first of all, let me just clarify. Do you think there is a scientific explanation for that? And do you know what that scientific explanation is? I have read it. And I, I think that your video did a very good job explaining. Um, you know, I, I sort of mentioned Milankovitch cycles in a moment, and you just sort of did a much better job explaining what those are. Um, mm. I, I have read a good deal about that. Um, at the moment, um, you know, it, it, there, there's a big disconnect because the same things that were happening in the atmosphere every previous time or the same things that were happening in space with Earth every single time, those, are, those things are happening again now. And so what, what is the disconnect? What is happening now that isn't, that isn't just a faster version, a more extreme version of what happened before? If, if you, oh, okay. if you well, have a good answer to that. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll answer that. I'll answer that. The first thing I can tell you that's happening now that never happened before is that we're getting carbon dioxide levels up to concentrations that we have never seen in any interglacial before. So the first thing that's extraordinary about what's happening now is the level of carbon dioxide. If you look back at interglacials in the past, there was never this kind of CO2 concentration simply because there was never this kind of fossil fuel burning. So we've had basically a 50% increase in the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere because we've been burning fossil fuels. That's one thing that's different. But I want to bring you back to one thing you said, which, um, which was that what is happening now is what happened before in the sense of, I, what I, from what I understand of your hypothesis, your idea of how this works, you think that ice uh, melts at the poles, comes down to the lower latitudes, cuts off circulation, Ice forms at the lower latitudes. This causes us to go into an ice age, or, or what a geologists would call a glaciation. Not, now, not the quite. thing is, you say that's that, happened that's before. not oh, quite that's it. Not it. Okay, um, it's it's a larger process of things, but the desalinization is a big portion of it. I mean, the the salinization level of the ocean could be as important as the CO two level in the troposphere. And, um, you know, what I, my question to you would be is how much, like, do you believe that everything we pump into the troposphere can just stay here at, you know, higher and higher densities without bleeding more and more into the oceans and up into the stratosphere and in the ocean? No, 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 because, because, uh, the science now, look, I, I can only follow what the researchers have measured. 50% has stayed up there, 50% basically goes into the biosphere and the oceans. But but can I, sorry, we, I don't want to stray away from this point because it's an important one. I want to establish what it is you think that is happening now that also happened to bring an end to the interglacials in the past. There's something you think that is happening now that also happened that brought the past interglacials to a close. I'm trying to establish what that is. Uh, what I'm saying is the only thing that is different is the is how much pollution humans have put into the atmosphere that's the only thing really that that's different just a quick fact check here so you can see what we're talking about the level of co2 during most interglacials doesn't go much above 280 parts per million that's the blue line in the last 200 years it's gone from 280 to over 400 parts per million in just 200 years that's the red line i mean it, it, All right. it, it, if you look at the timing I mean, if you look at the timing of this interglacial, this has been a fairly long interglacial. Um, 
You know, it, really? I mean, compared to the last couple, wouldn't you say? Well, the, 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 the one that you pointed to when you did your second video rebutting mine, uh, you actually clarified what you were talking about, which was then clear that you were talking about coming out of a, a glaciation. You were looking at Termination 4. That was the example you gave of us coming out of a glaciation. Well, out of Termination 4, the interglacial lasted about 50,000, 60,000 years. Now, we're, we're only at about 11,000 into our interglacial, so we have a long way to go yet. Others are much shorter, but, but you also get into glacials that are much longer. Um, so, I mean, these are not insignificant time periods. Um, that, but again, I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to stray away from the point that I'm trying to get to. You, you said somehow we come out of this, glacia, uh, this interglacial. I'm trying to establish what it is you think scientists say. Because you, you, you're suggesting that maybe scientists don't know. No, why I am not. That. I'm not suggesting that, and it's not like every scientist in the world says uh, it's the exact same things and puts the exact same attribution on all of them. Um, you know, I, I, I am not sure whether you fully understand what we were trying to do or what we were trying to communicate there, um, but this is not always meant to be um, towing the exact line of what it of what peer-reviewed science is because okay all right but, but let me just tell you what the science says and then you can tell me why they're wrong uh, that, that would be the easiest way fair enough according to according to the science these cycles happen and they're very regular cycles I mean they've got a period of periodicity of about a hundred thousand years and they happen because of Milankovitch cycles. So we go into uh, a glaciation because the Earth gets less sunlight, because of the tilt and the wobble of the Earth's axis uh, and its orbit. We get less sunlight, and that little bit of uh, less sunlight causes uh, the Earth to cool a little bit, which gives us more ice, which gives us more albedo. That causes uh, the oceans to degas CO2 and carbon dioxide being a very powerful greenhouse gas. Uh, sorry, to, to absorb CO2 because it's, uh, it's more uh, soluble in colder water. That takes CO2 out of the atmosphere and that, that continues the cooling. So there's a kind of a positive feedback which accelerates this cooling. Now, coming out of that is when we get the Milankovitch cycles work in the opposite way, where we get um, a, an increase in insulation and that causes um, less ice. That means less albedo. CO2 is degas from the oceans, and CO2 is a powerful greenhouse gas, so it, it warms the Earth even further. And again, we get a positive feedback. You suggested that that ought to cause runaway warming, but there's no reason on I, Earth why that should I, cause I did, warming. I did not suggest that that would cause runaway warming. I, oh, okay. I, I put that at the <clears throat> at the end as a as a as like sort of like a footnote or endnote to the. The very clear periodicity, and one of your commenters hit me hard and said, "Hey, look, take a look during your supposed ice ages. There's little spikes up here and there." And I had to explain that I wasn't suggesting that Milankovitch cycles were responsible for every up and down on that chart, but the very clear periodicity that I imagine a five or six year old could say, "Hey, do you see the pattern of things going up and down and spiking up and going Absolutely. back?" Absolutely. You know, I, I said yeah. uh, what I was saying was, "Hey, if you wanted to know more about that, you could look into Milankovitch cycles." That was all I said. Yeah, and, and so there's no real mystery then about why we're going in and out of uh, glaciations, or do you still think there's, there's no? But a, but the, all right. So so here's here's the point, and here let me, if I may, run you through weeks one through eight that you missed, and you can maybe tell me if something's going wrong here. All right. So sooner or later, um, and uh, I have actually read a couple different things about where we are in the Milankovitch cycles, but we are not exactly in. The, the favorable side if, if you want a warmer planet. Uh, we are going to, you know, basically from here on out, we are going towards the colder period. Now, that's not something that's going to be playing in our lifetimes, all right? But it's something that should be thought of when they're talking about, you know, hundreds, thousands of years ahead of time. For right now, here are the points that we have made that, that, makes, that make us think that the planet is about to cool down. And first and foremost is a combination of political pressure 
continually worsening extreme weather and technological innovations are going to reduce carbon emissions. Never underestimate human ingenuity or the power of disasters and propaganda, both good and bad propaganda. There is almost no question in my mind that if you have any foresight, you can see the wild reduction of pollution of this planet. It is not at all hard to see. If that occurs, it's not like the desalinization of the oceans stops immediately. Those do increase the freeze potential of the oceans in winter, and they disrupt critical ocean currents. They do help stratify the ocean and partially incarcerate the seafloor methane releases. Now, while that is happening, and it's not like if we stop polluting tomorrow, the, the warmth in the Arctic that we've been noticing anomalously is going to just suddenly disappear. But we've learned that the warm Arctic is not the, uh, you know, is another way to have a weaker polar vortex, early sudden stratospheric warming events, and create more jet stream blocking. That was what I showed in, in the actual video. Now, what I brought back in during the discussion was the fact that we had seen tons of articles about how low solar activity weakens the polar vortex, increases early sudden stratospheric warming events, and creates more jet stream blocking. And so what we will have here is the sun entering a significant minimum. The Arctic will still be warm even if we stop pollution. And both of those things will force weaker polar vortex, increases in sudden uh, stratospheric warmings, and more jet stream blocking. Now, specifically on the decreased solar, you know, this idea of a 0.1% uh, change over the solar cycle being the sun's influence in climate is absolutely preposterous. And if you saw the solar forcing for CMIP6, when that does come out, it will no longer be restricted to that 0.1%. The solar scientists have stood up and said that is uncharacteristically preposterous. Because there's also X-ray radiation and there's solar energetic particles, along with the indirect connection to galactic cosmic rays, the ionization of the cloud layer, etc., offering less energy while Earth's albedo profile goes up due to cosmic rays. And so that's going to be happening more and more as we enter into that significant solar minimum this century. All these things should be happening this century. Um, Okay, and it, um, you know th this is this is all fine, but I mean, uh, I, I really, I, I thought we were here to to talk about my re misrepresentations of what you'd said. So I'd really like to get back onto that. I, I mean, all your theories are great, and I, I have no idea uh, how much uh, evidence you got to support this because you know what I would need to do is look at your sources and go through them. Um, so could, could we just go back, um, would you mind if I, I, I talk about, you know, what we were here to debate, which was um, my misrepresentations of your video and what you said in that video. Uh, I'm sure that you said a lot of things in other videos, and I'm sure that this is the eighth in a series and that one through seven talked about all sorts of other things, but I really can't get into those now because I, I haven't seen those videos. I'm, so let's just deal with, what I, with this video. What I um, want to know is yeah. why... why and I, I don't know if you did this in comments or if there was some other video or on, or you did this on Facebook or whatever because I I don't understand how this happened but I got literally over 800 comments within the span of 24 hours all saying mm -hmm. virtually the same thing that I didn't understand what those papers were saying and that I didn't have any basis whatsoever in talking about okay then then let's talk about that because i suspect the reason they said that was because you didn't understand what the papers were saying now if you want to say you did understand that's absolutely fine with me and and that's what i would like to talk about so um what i've got um is, is um is is what you what you said uh about um about my video. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to talk about one of the papers if you want to, if you want me to talk about Which how paper did you I think felt I that misunderstood. was misrepresented. Well, here's the thing. I wasn't, well, I, I was not attempting to represent the conclusions of the papers. No. I was not attempting no, I, to do that. I know, but let's go with what you actually said you, you were, you were doing. Let, let me just play you this, 
this clip, and this is from your, your video. Okay? Cold, okay. fresh water and various atmospheric connections send us spiraling into an ice age thereafter. Just this month, we learned that part of that process may include that extra cold, fresh water creating a stratification in the oceans that halts convection, not to mention the Gulf Stream. So, um, all that this was all I was meant to do, and um, th th this may help you understand a lot. Um, I put I put huge faith in observations. I put much less faith in interpretations and conclusions based on those. And um, frankly, I have the track record to back that up. Um, this, the only thing I cared about was we have been looking and waiting for the story that says that there is an increased freshening of that water. And the reason we've been waiting for that is because we've been waiting for the Beaufort Gyre to release. We've been waiting for that for three times longer than we've ever supposed to have waited for that before. And it's not like people are just stationed up there taking measurements of the current all the time. It's not like you can put buoys. Okay, there. so basically this paper, you're, you're saying this paper doesn't support what you were saying about uh, the, um, this, this cold water being part of the process that leads into an ice age. You agree that it doesn't support that? It, it supports my overall thesis that we could have a mini ice age like event this century and all we were looking for was the increased freshening of the surface water all right so this is your theory this is something you come up with this has been what this whole thing is about the notion that hey look we yeah. are we're about to see pollution take a dive while there are a, everywhere you look signals that cold is coming or at least cold forcing yeah, yeah, but, is but coming. It, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Sorry. I, this is where this is where I'm. I'm. Uh, I can actually begin to disagree with what you're saying here because um, you say cold is coming. You're talking about global cold. I'm talking. As you know, are you not? I'm talking about another mini ice age like event we had in the 1400s to 1600s, something like that. Okay, that's okay. that was called the Little Ice Age, which is global cold. You are talking about global temperatures getting cooler rather than warmer. Yes. Okay, right. Now that we've established that, you agree that these papers don't support that, but this is basically just your idea. We've already established, and in fact, I did play in my video the part where you do say that they don't support it so I'm not trying to uh, misrepresent what you said but you did say that we learned this month and um, in fact you were showing this paper uh, suggesting that we learn from this paper so all I'm saying is well we didn't learn it from this paper this is something that you have come up with and you would agree uh, all this paper does is show that there will there, there is uh, cold fresh water coming down from the Arctic uh, and it's hovering above the saline water, the more saline water of the overturning circulation, and possibly cutting it off. So that's basically what the paper says. The rest of it is is all your interpretation. I think we're agreed on that, are we? Yes, but that has never been something I... So is this whole thing going to be about, like, you didn't realize that I was giving my my hypothesis and my things about this, and you don't think I have the chops to do it? Should we just skip to where I oh, no, 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 not at all, not at all. I'm just trying to establish um, uh, that one of the one of the things you said was that somehow I had misled people uh, into in, saying that you were claiming that these papers uh, somehow uh, did not support uh, warming or something like that. I can play you the clip, but but basically, uh, what I'm showing is that. Uh, there was a slight misrepresentation in that you did say that we're learning from these papers that this is part of the process that leads into a, a, a glaciation. Brother, brother I think that was a very, I think that was a kind way of saying it. If you were just to walk into this seminar week nine in this video, the whole thing seems like of of a wild misrepresentation. I think I think. Oh, okay, well you, that's fine. So I didn't misread anything then. It, no, it does, but but what you even, did do, even you would agree. But what even, you did sorry, was even you would agree that if you just watch this video and you haven't watched the entire series, of which most people, when they watch YouTube videos, they watch a video because it's got an interesting headline. They read, they they watch it, and they get 
kind of taken in by it. Now, if they haven't seen the previous seven, they wouldn't know uh, what this video is saying. So when you say, well, you know, you're misrepresenting what I said. Actually, I'm just taking exactly what you said. Now, maybe there were a lot of thoughts behind that that you didn't put out in the video. There were a lot of things that you'd said earlier that were not in this video. That's fine. Uh, I'm just saying that this is what you were putting out in this video, which a lot of people would see without having seen the entire series. I, I strongly disagree. The only reason why so many people are going to see this is because of what you did. I am not discoverable easily unless you type my name in. I am intentionally hard to discover. On YouTube. Oh, no, no, I've seen, I've seen your name before. Y yes, you've seen my name before because it pops up on, on a lot of your videos, and we've talked about the same kind of thing a lot of times. But it's not like um, somebody could go type in climate change and my name would ever come up in a million years. Mm, but even so, I think I think we, we all have a responsibility to represent... If that is the case, you had a, I think you had a responsibility to send me an email and say, hey, what are you doing? Or at least go and try to find some of my other videos on, on the climate. Because what ended up happening is a bunch of people, hundreds of people, didn't know what happened. And they came and, my God, some of your viewers were so horrendously okay. uh, vulgar. Listen, I can't... I, sorry, I... I had a lot from yours as well, so I can't be responsible for what people post on your videos, and, but, and, and I'm sure you can't be responsible for what people uh, no, post on my but, videos. So but the idea, let's not, let's not get in. But can the we talk about the science? Yes, because and, and not, I'll, not I'll, get into an argument about what I was talking. Somebody posted something that you found offensive. What I was talking about and what offended me was the notion that this was portrayed to be something it wasn't. This was portrayed okay, to then, be. Then that's what that's what this discussion is about. Then that's what this discussion is about. So let's get to the bottom of, of whether this this was fair enough or not. Um, now you you did say um, you need to go to the studies on this, right? Uh, uh, the um, the study that you're talking about is this one by Altman's. You you've read this study, have you? Yeah, if you're going to ask me to to remember specific lines out of it, I, well, I, mean, no, I, I I'm not, I'm not. But okay. you did obviously read the study, um, yes. you know, because you're quoting the study, and you did advise people to go and read the study rather right. than just the summary. So I'm just establishing that you actually did read that study. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now it doesn't, and and I think we can agree, it doesn't concur with your idea that uh, this is going to lead into an ice age. We've already established that. How about whether it concurs that the cold water coming south is likely to freeze? Is there anything in the paper that suggests that? I did not suggest that that is where that information came from. That was something that people no, already... No, you did. No, no, I didn't say that. I was just asking no, whether the Nothing in this paper that says that. But as long as people realize I didn't say it did. I didn't say okay, this paper it, said that. No, but does it, does it contradict that, though? Um... Maybe. I, I don't remember uh, exactly. That's not really the reason I was reading this paper. Like, for example, I didn't pay much attention to the methods section of this paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? No, I, I very rarely do either. But um, what, do you think, um, I mean, do you disagree with the paper, put it that way? Is there anything in the paper that you disagree with that I've, you think they got wrong? You know, I... I do remember the answer is yes, but I don't remember what that was exactly at this time. And frankly, the, the majority of my problems with these papers is the fact that, you know, because of how many papers come out in the climate realm, um, even though we have known what solar forcing is going to be for CMIP6 for a year now, um, and even though there have been hundreds of papers that are going to be included in the next update when it comes out, there is nobody who's using anything but CMIP5 for these studies. And it, it, this is by necessity. You couldn't expect, you know, even these three people, and if they had 10 students working with them, to go and figure out what, the, what all the new variables would be in their model. Between the time they submitted the paper and it got published, a bunch of those variables would change. You know? Do you okay, know what? what was the conclusion of the paper? <laughs> Dude, you, I, I know it's been a while since you read it, but... Basically, what was its conclusion? Um, oh man, I, I'm racking my brain here. This, uh, was this the one that was talking about um, the accumulation versus uh, the accumulated retention versus the release amount? This
The paper we're looking at is the one Ben mentioned here and that he's citing. It's the paper from which Ben said, we learned that part of the process of glaciation may include extra cold fresh water creating a stratification in the oceans. The paper does say that fresh water will be injected into the Atlantic, but it does not say that that is part of the process of glaciation. So we did not learn this from the paper. If you want to check this, I've cited the paper in the video description. This is the one that was talking about an increased uh, risk. Well, are you seeing the, 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 the screenshot in front of you? I, I'm, I, I'm seeing it? it, but it's a little blurry in terms of the words. Okay, the, the headline of the paper is Increased Risk of a Shutdown of Ocean Convection Posed by Warm North Atlantic Summers. Okay. Um, which pretty much says it all. You know, that, that was the one that, that um, I just played on your clip that you suggested showed that this would stop the overturning circulation of the uh, Atlantic and it would keep the cool, fresh water on top and, and the saline water underneath stop the circulation. Now, your your theory is that that would lead to freezing of this um, top layer of, of cold water. N not all, it's not like it's going to freeze down off the coast of North Carolina, man. But it, the, as more ice enters the water, and as it loses its saline, its saline profile, we will see spikes in ice. I mean, how did we get record high Antarctic okay. ice right. in 2013 right. and 2014? Then, then if, if we're going to see spikes in ice, you do you know that the conclusion of the paper was the complete opposite? I am aware of that. Fact, the reason, but we have seen the, the reason, opposite happen in both the North and the South over just the last decade. In 2013 and 2014, okay. there was record high Antarctic ice. And then we didn't have record high Arctic ice, but we saw uh, what they called a record recovery of the Arctic just no, a couple years ago. I think you, you, you misunderstand me. When I say that its conclusion is the complete opposite, I'm not saying it's the complete opposite of your your theory. I mean, that's that's um, that's something else. We're talking about specifics. You say that the uh, the water on top will freeze. Now, in fact, what the paper concludes, and the paper is is quite clear on on the quantity of, of heat coming out. I, I, have you got? Um, can you see now the middle of the paper, which I'm showing you with two red boxes, one left, one left, and one right. Right. Um, they talk about um, uh, regressing on the left-hand side, regressing the results on both summer indices. We find that the salinity anomaly accounts for an energy surplus of around 2.8 times 10 to the 8 joules per square meter after fresh Omega sea summers and around 4.8 times 10 to the uh, power of 8 joules per square meter after fresh Labrador summers. Now, we can go on and, and look at their conclusions. And their conclusions actually say... That the that the reason, uh, but because we've got this this uh, layer of fresh water on top, the reason it's not sinking is not because it's too cold, but because it's too warm. And if it got colder, it would sink because, of course, uh, uh, colder colder water does sink, and then the circulation would would be okay. The reason the circulation is not working is because the water is too warm. So, in fact, those figures, which um, I haven't heard you disputing. Uh, show that, the, in fact, this water is too warm. It wouldn't freeze. It would simply drop and cause the circulation to continue. Um, this is not just my interpretation of the paper, and I, I read the paper. Uh, New Scientist says exactly the same thing. Right. Um, and this is a clip from New Scientist, which I'm showing you now. Um, the fresh water poses a threat to convection Man. because being less dense than seawater, it has to be cooled. Um, so I am I'm very not, um, aware of this conclusion, but... Oh, you are? Okay. Show I thought you didn't know what the conclusion was. Well, I mean, I, I remember it now, but that would be the part I disagreed with. Because okay, and what, why do you disagree with them? Because we have actually seen observations of the physical world that show the exact okay. opposite. I, I want to know specifically, sorry, specifically, what do you disagree with? Do you disagree that cool water would sink? No, that, that I don't disagree. If the fresh water got colder, it would sink? Do you disagree with that? No, what I am saying is this same excuse of, oh, the, the you know, this is the same thing that they said caused the record high Antarctic ice 
back in 2013 and 2014 when all those websites were using the record high Antarctic ice to try to slam climate science? What was the proper answer? Yeah, but but you're talking you're talking about this paper and you're talking about the North Atlantic. So can we get back to what I'm this saying paper is and the North Atlantic? And this is the thing that you, you keep said cutting you me off. With. You I'd keep like cutting me off, man. I, I, I'm just trying to get the full thought out, and you keep cutting me off. Mm. And it's you, okay. You, you, your accent, is, your accent then. is so charming that it's like I, I'm thrown off. I don't know <laughs> what you. to do about it. But so what I'm saying is, the reason given for the record high Arctic recovery when it happened a couple years ago was that so much cold fresh water had melted off into it the explanation for the record high antarctic ice in 2013 and 2014 was that cold fresh water had melted off into the into the water cooled it off slightly changed the salinity those were the i mean i wasn't part of that battle back and forth but i saw one side of the debate yelling hey like look at this we've got record high Antarctic ice back then and like hey look we've got a record recovery in the Arctic and I saw the other side saying well you just put a bunch of cold fresh water in there chilled it off and increased uh, I'm sorry and, and and decreased the salinity what did you expect was going to happen and here we have this other paper that it observes the same thing and then uses and then uses a you know what is I suppose very good math um, Re, uh, you know, repeatable, you know, math that can be replicated to show that something is going to happen. But we have seen this exact same thing and the exact opposite happens on the planet. This was the, okay. that, that, that water, the, the freshening on top and the melting of the ice, that was what was supposedly causing that. And it, it, um, it, yeah. will this not have an effect on the Gulf Stream as well? I mean, I, I actually don't know as much about its effect on the Gulf Stream and the Kuroshio Current. But, I mean, would it not disrupt those as well eventually? First of all, let me apologize for interrupting you. Um, you, you you're right, that, that was rude. Um, I'll tell you why I did it, because I, I felt when we're on a track and we're on a subject, um, I have the experience as a journalist, and I've interviewed a lot of politicians, and I'm, I'm not saying you're a politician, but, but people do tend to, to get away to other subjects, and, and the Antarctic and the Arctic are completely different situations, completely different. Um, so you can't say, yes well... Yes and uh, no. I wouldn't say they're completely the different situations. It's, it, it, it's both, when what I'm talking about, the surface freeze. It is about the temperature and okay. the salinity profile of the water, which is affected by the melting ice. That is not, I mean, it's not like you've got different chemistries at work and you've got different laws of physics at work in the North and South Poles, right? Okay, uh, but, but there, is, there is a difference in, in ocean circulation. There's a, there's a huge difference Certainly. in the amount of warming. And I'm and, uh, sorry, but, but I think let's focus on the thing that we're talking about because once you start saying, well, yeah, but in another situation, it's completely different. Yeah, in another situation, it is completely different. I think we can both agree on Look, that. I, there, are, there, are reasons, there are reasons why things happen in Antarctica. Uh, for example, this It happened this, in the Arctic, too. Ice. It happened in yeah. the Arctic, so too. Let, let, let's deal with the Arctic, then, and the North Atlantic, and the paper that, that is now the one that's under discussion. What I'm interested in knowing is that you disagree with the, the paper, and I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is what is it you disagree with when they say that the fresh water on top is staying on top because it's warmer, because it has a heat content, whereas if it cooled, as we know from basic physics, cool water tends to sink. Um, so you disagree with the conclusions of the paper, and I'm trying to find out why you think that cool water would not sink and restart the ocean circulation? What is it that, that you know that these researchers don't know? Because this is the exact same thing that happened when the Arctic had its record ice recovery. Uh, with respect, it's not. Um, the, the Arctic doesn't have the same overturning circulation. We are and, talking and about the, the Arctic. Other, the other thing is the Arctic is a lot colder. The Ant Sorry, the I wasn't I'm talking. Sorry, I might have missed something. You, uh, you say that again. I'm sorry. That was all probably my fault. All right, for so misinterpreting what yes. you just said. Okay, I did include that thing about the about the Antarctic. But during that same time, 
they had what up north what they called a record recovery of the Arctic ice. There was a spike back up. And during that brief period, and of course, it's all gone now. We're at record low now. But if you'll recall, and I don't remember if it was exactly at the time when Antarctica was at record high or it was slightly after, but there was that period where there was the uh, the record recovery from the low point in summer to where it was in winter. And it, it had a great winter. And the explanation for that was more cold, fresh water melted off into the ocean. So I emailed him after the discussion and asked him to cite the study that said the explanation for that record recovery was more fresh water melted off into the ocean. His response? It didn't come from a scientific study. It was on a social media site. Ben doesn't remember what year it was, but he remembers there was a post from Michael Mann and some guy from NOAA, whose name he can't remember. He doesn't remember which ice recovery was being referred to, but he says it was in the last 10 years and it was a record recovery, so that can only be the record ice advance of 2012-2013. Unfortunately, Ben didn't keep a copy, so I have no idea what was actually written in that post or what study it was based on, if any. So let's go to the actual study, which shows the scientific explanation. They don't say the recovery was due to ice melting into the ocean. They say the opposite. It was caused by a lack of melt. A definitive study published in Nature Geoscience concluded that the increase was driven by the retention of thick sea ice northwest of Greenland during 2013, which in turn was associated with a 5% drop in the number of days on which melting occurred. So we moved on to other issues, which I'll have to put in part two of this conversation when I get around to mixing it with the graphics. I go on assignment in the middle of April, which is why I had to get this done quickly. I've got another timely video to post this week, plus my discussion with Academic Agent, another YouTuber, and I'm putting the final touches to a regular video that I hope to post before I leave. It's going to be unusually busy on this channel for the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching.